Amen. If you love Jesus, we make some noise once more. Can we clap? Can we thank you? Embrace this. I don't know if you've ever realized that, that you're kind of good at something that, that not everybody else is good at. When, when, when I was younger, I realized that, that I was a good swimmer, which surprised me because I rarely swam. And thinking back, I, I think I, I was a good swimmer was because when I was like three, my mom was, was teaching me how to swim. And in Australia, it's a rite of passage as a three-year-old to have some floaties put on you and just get thrown in the pool and you got to paddle and figure it out. And so I'm, I'm three, my mom's throwing me in there and I'm, I'm just paddling. She thinks I, I've gotten it and so she starts having a conversation with floaties somehow. And I sink to the bottom of the pool, almost trapped. I'm like paddling for my life. Luckily someone saw me, dove in and, and pulled me to safety. And so I think whenever I'm in the water, whenever I'm swimming, I get those flashbacks that I'm about to die. And so I just swim as fast as I can. Because when I was in high school, I made it to the, the regional finals of, of the 50 meter freestyle swimming race, all right? Regional finals. And I'm not, I'm not really a swimmer, but I, but I made it. And so I, I'm there and my race was about to be called and I saw all the other guys in the race and they all looked like professional swimmers. You know, they all had the Speedos on and the swimming cap and the goggles and I'm like, I'm, I'm not a swimmer. You know, I had some soccer shorts on, no, no swimming cap. I get the Speedos, I, I understand the aerodynamics, you go quick in the water, but I'm like, I, no way. And they're looking at me like, man, you got no chance. Like, what are you even doing here? Like, you, you, don't, you don't belong up here. Like, there's no chance you're gonna win. And I'm looking at them like, man, I don't care if I win or not. This is a day off school. I'm not gonna wear those Speedos and look the way you're looking. I got too much pride for that, you know what I mean? The, the, the gun goes off and we, we, we jump in and we just start swimming. And we get to the end, I touch the water, I look up, and I come first. I've beaten all these professional swimmers, and I was in shock. So was everybody else. All these other swimmers, they were so mad, so angry. People from my school kind of rushed down and, you know, picked me up. I felt like a hero. This is one of like the highlight moments of my life. They're asking me questions like, Josh, what was your preparation? Like, how did you win this? I'm like, well, I didn't have any preparation. Did that give me practicing? I'm like, no, I, I rarely swim. It's one day out of school. They're like, well, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, what did you eat for lunch? I'm like, man, I had some spicy chicken nuggets. <laughs> I guess I was just graced to swim. I think sometimes we, we view God's grace like that. Oh, he, he's grace to swim. Oh, she's just grace for business. You, you're, you're grace to win. You're, you're grace for greatness. Now, if only I could be grace like, like, like their grace. If, if only I could be grace like, like he's grace. And so we, we find ourselves competing and comparing and copying. But, but hear me, church, you are not grace to copy someone. You are grace to become someone. Because God's grace is more than His unearned, unmerited favor. God's grace is God's divine empowerment to become who God's called you to become. So that you can do what God's called you to do. And I think many of us, we think that God's grace is just an invitation to the easy life. An invitation to the, the, the problem-free life. But I've read 2 Timothy over and over again, and that's not the kind of grace that the Apostle Paul is talking about in this book. Paul is in prison. This is his last recorded letter. He is there writing this letter to young Timothy, who is in a challenging season of his life, trying to build the church in Ephesus. And, and Paul's trying to encourage Timothy. And Paul says this in verse 6, For this reason I remind you to... Fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Join with me in, in suffering. You catch that? Like Paul, that, that doesn't sound very encouraging. Join with me in suffering. Like, like, don't you mean join with me in a life of, of ease and, and comfort and enjoyment? But, but no, Paul doesn't say, Paul says, join with me in suffering. 
Paul goes on in verse 9, he has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Hear me, church, if you have made a decision to follow Jesus, if you are on this journey, God has saved you, God has called you, God has purposed you, and God has graced you. But make no mistake, God has not graced you to live an easy life. God hasn't graced you to live a life void of pain and void of suffering. No, God has graced you to endure it. And could it be, church, could it be that one of the evidences of God's grace on your life is not your ability to enjoy success, but your ability to endure suffering? Just turn to someone and say, I'm grace for this. I'm grace for this. We don't like to talk about suffering, right? Suffering sounds painful. We don't, we don't, we don't like that. I, um, I got a phone call from the school nurse a little while ago. Um, my, my daughter's five, she's in, in pre-K, and the school nurse calls me, he's like, is this Lila's dad? I'm like, yes, it's, it's Lila's dad, is my daughter okay? Had a little freak out moment. I'm like, yeah, I think she's okay, but she's coming to the nurse's office and she's complaining that she has a, a sore tummy. She's, she's got pain in her tummy. And I'm like, look how bad do you think it really is? You know, I'm like, my daughter, she's a little bit dramatic. <laughs> Gets that from her mother. Uh, no one who knows me believes that. But I'm like, I, look, can you just, can you ask me just to just go to the bathroom, have some water, she'll be okay, right? I'm in the middle of my day, I've got some meeting back in my car, I can't figure out. And she's like, cool, sure. 45 minutes later, I get another phone call. Lila's come back to the nurse's office, and she's complaining that her tummy really hurts. I, I really think you need to come and pick her up. I'm like, oh my gosh, of course. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, I feel like the worst dad ever right now. I'm like, I'm, I'm on my way. And I, I race as fast as I can, get to her school, pick her up. She's like, daddy. I'm like, I'm so sorry, baby, let's go. And I, I, I take her back to our, to our apartment. And as soon as we get into our apartment, I put a bag down. And Lila's like, you know what, Daddy? My tummy doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me? It's like, Daddy, my, it's, the, the pain is gone. I, I feel great now. Like, can, we, can you make me a snack? Can we wrestle? Can we go bowling? I'm like, Lila Rose Hunt, you told me that you had a... So tell me that you were in pain. She's like, hey, I was in pain. It hurt just a little bit, but it feels, it feels great now. <laughs> she hustled me. Oh, I was in pain. Couldn't believe it. I mean, her pain threshold is abysmal. Her pain threshold is embarrassing, but she's five years old. You know what I mean? She's five years old, and I think her pain threshold is indicative of a lot of Christians' pain threshold in life. Obviously, no one here would go to the strong and tough in New York. I get that, but I think we have a lot of weak, weak Christians today. Too easily offended, so sensitive and defensive, blindly entitled. I think there's a lot of a lot of weak Christians today. Like, oh man, my boss asked me about this project that I'm working on, and I know he just asked me because he doesn't trust me. He's always <coughs> looking over my shoulder, and I just can't take it anymore. Like, I don't think I can work for this company. More like that person's rude, that person's harsh. They, they never uh, acknowledge how hard I work. And I just, I don't know if I can do this. No, no, you can so do this. You can do this because you are graced for this. And if you are going to become all that God has called you to become and do all that God has called you to do, like you might actually need to, to toughen up a little on the inside. Because I don't want to be one of those weak Christians. I don't want to give someone in my workplace another reason not to come to church, another reason to doubt Christians and Christianity. No, we got to toughen up a little bit. I think we need to have a little more grit. I think we need to learn to manage our emotions better. I think we need to learn how to, how to forgive quicker, how to bounce back, like not be so defensive and so sensitive all the time. We, we got to have some thick skin and, and a soft heart. Thick skin, it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you think. Throw whatever you want at me. I got some thick skin. But I've also got a soft heart. And I'm going to keep my heart soft toward the things of God, soft toward people. And if we can have thick skin, soft heart, we won't lose. Maybe you're like, Josh, you don't understand the season that I'm in because I, I feel like I'm, I'm losing right now. I, I'm in one of those seasons. I feel like I'm losing. I, I feel like one more heartbreak would, would break me. I feel like 
one more rejection would, would ruin me. I think one more disappointment would, would, would destroy me. Like, I don't know if I've got what it takes. I don't know if I can keep going. I don't know if I can do this. No, you can so do this because you are graced for this. And I just want to remind you today that, that you are stronger than you think you are. Whatever it is that you're facing right now, whatever season you find yourself in, there is a strength on the inside of you, and it didn't originate with you. It's not there because you were strong and you were tough and you, you faced some challenges in your life. No, you have an internal strength on the inside of you because God placed it there. Because you were created in His image and His likeness. And greater is God within you than He that is within the world. You are stronger than you think you are. You have this capacity for growth. A capacity to endure that, that maybe you haven't even tapped into yet. Turn to someone and say, I'm graced for this. I think Paul knew that Timothy needed some encouragement. I think Paul knew that Timothy was in a place where he was starting to doubt his calling. Starting to doubt that, that he could get through the season that he was in. So Paul's in, encouraging him. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. Paul says this, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace. I know it's tough, Timothy. I know you're facing some challenges. I know things aren't going great in your marriage right now. I know your business is taking a hit. I know you're facing some disappointment. I know the dream hasn't gone according to plan. But you got to remind yourself, I'm, I'm graced with this. And I think Timothy would have been asking himself the question, like, okay, if, if, if I can't live a life void of pain and void of suffering, and if I'm, I'm graced to endure pain and endure suffering, like, like, Paul, how do I do that? Do you want me to live strong in the grace? Like, what does that look like? How do I live strong in the grace? And what I love about 2 Timothy is that a few verses later, Paul answers that question. Paul gives Timothy this key to living strong in the grace and becoming all that God has called him to become. If we read a little further, 2 Timothy 2, verse 8 and 9, Paul says this, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal, but God's word is not chained. That, that's the answer right there. Two words, remember Jesus. If you want to live strong in the grace, if you want to endure whatever life throws your way, you've got to remember Jesus. You've got to remember that Jesus conquered death so that death wouldn't conquer you. You've got to remember that the life, the, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, you've got to remember that, that God showed up on the scene. You've got to remember that He's a God that forgives, a God that heals, a God that redeems and satisfies. Because how easily do we forget? How easily do we go about our lives and we face challenges and opposition and disappointment and discouragement? We get so focused on all of that that we forget to focus on Him. Look at what King David says in Psalm 103, verse 2 to 5. Praise the Lord, my soul. Forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Forget not all his benefits. Come on up here. Forget not. Remember Jesus. I think sometimes we... Remember the things we need to forget. Can we forget the things we need to remember? We've got to remember Jesus. We've got to remember what He went through on our behalf. Remember that the same grace that saved you will sustain you. And can you imagine if every time you face a challenge, every time you experience pain, every time you feel the pressure, every time you want to react, every time you want to lose your cool, every time you want to take matters into your own hands, that you in fact stopped and remembered Jesus? Like what would life look like? What would your relationships look like? 
What would your business look like? What would your career look like if, if the next time you, you thought about quitting, you, you remember Jesus, you didn't quit on anyone. You're not going to stop me. What if the next time you thought, I don't know if I can, I can do this, you, you reminded yourself, you know what, the same grace that saved me will sustain me. I, I, I can get through this. I'm, I'm graced through this. What if the next time... Instead of seeing all the reasons why you can't, you focus on that one reason why you can. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things. That word things in the Greek is better translated seasons. I can do all seasons through Christ who gives me strength. Come on, anyone thankful that God is with you in every season? Anyone thankful that your current season doesn't have to define your life? That the season that you live in doesn't have to live in you? We've got to remember Jesus. We've got to keep our eyes on Him. Hebrews 12, verse 2 and 3. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how He did it. He never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. Catch this, when you find yourselves flagging in your faith. Go over that story again. Item by item, that long litany of hostility that he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls when you find yourselves flagging in the faith. Go over that story again. Remember, Jesus, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Anyone thankful for Jesus tonight? Anyone thankful for His grace that sustains you, that empowers you? His grace, which is made perfect in your weakness? You know, about six months ago, if I can be honest tonight, I was just in one of those seasons where I was just feeling just overwhelmed by life, overwhelmed by church life, living in Boston, leading church up there, just overwhelmed. My wife was very pregnant. My daughter's being bullied on the school bus. Like I was just like having a moment of like, God, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. God, I don't know if I can do this. And as I'm opening up my heart to God and kind of having this complaining session with God, like, God, I don't know if I can do this. I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me very clearly. I felt like the Holy Spirit said, Joshua, you're graced for this. You're graced for this. And it was as simple as that, but it changed everything for me. Because I was like, you know what, God? You're right. Funny that the, the God's right. That he, that he knows what he's doing. That he knows what he's talking about. That he knows what's best for you. I was like, God, you're right. I'm, I'm graced for this. I'm graced for this. Confidence started to come back. Courage started to come back. I'm grace for this. I might not have all the answers, but I'm grace for this. I might not always know what to say, but I'm, I'm grace for this. I might not always be there for every single person who wants me to be there for them, but I'm, I'm grace for this. I might not be the most confident, but I'm grace for this. I might not be the most educated, but I'm grace for this. And you need to know tonight that God's grace is on your life. That He has graced you to become who He's called you.
but he's holding it so strong to his faith. He's in the Word. He told me that his relationship with Jesus has just come alive since being locked up. He's telling me that he's in the Word, he's journaling, and he's encouraging some of the other inmates and he's a bit older than, than the rest of the guys. And so he's started this Bible study. And this one time I went to visit him and he was just feeling really down. Like sometimes he's up but he's, he's confident, he's full of faith. We'll pray together, but this time he's really down, discouraged. There was another setback in the case. He had a motion hearing coming up the next week and he was just feeling really uneasy about it. And when I go in to see him, I can't take anything with me. I can't even take my Bible. And so the only scripture I can share is what I have memorized. And it's in the middle of writing this message. And so 2 Timothy 2 verse 1 came to, to mind. And I'm like, hey, I, I know you, you're feeling fearful and nervous and stressed out about this motion hearing. But, but let me tell you, like God's done grace is on your life. Give your grace to endure this. 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. Just be strong in the grace that is in Christ. Be strong in the grace. Be strong in the grace. And he's like, all right, I'll, I'll try. Next week was his motion hearing, and I went and sat with his mom and his sister to encourage him. And it went really good that the next week I went to visit him again. And he's like, Josh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe what happened that day when we were all in the, in the holding cell. I'm like, tell me that. He's like, well, the, the atmosphere in there was really, just really heavy and there's about 15, 16 guys in there all awaiting to see the judge and people were, were freaked out and it was stressful and it was just this real uneasy environment and I felt like God was stirring me to pray for everyone. And I just got up and I remembered that verse, be strong in the grace. And I thought, I'm, I'm gonna be strong in the grace. And so he gets up in front of these other guys waiting to see the judge and he's like, look guys, I know we're all about to, to see the judge right now kind of feeling all over the place, but is it cool if I just pray for everyone right now? And everyone's like, yeah, for sure, let's pray. So they all kind of knelt down and held hands in this holding cell, and my friend, in the most challenging season of suffering that he has ever gone through, still awaiting trial, two and a half years he's been in there, should have been out a long time ago, starts praying for God's grace over these guys, starts praying for God's peace, starts praying for strength and he, he told me that, that something shifted in the room, that the, the atmosphere, the heaviness just lifted off everybody and there was a real sense of peace and a real sense of God's presence and he's telling me this story and I'm blown away but I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be blown away because God's grace is on my friend's life. God's grace is able to cause you to keep going and keep moving forward. And I want to remind you tonight that the same grace that saved you will sustain you. That His grace has called you to keep growing and keep going, to keep your head up. He's graced you to keep moving. He's graced you to rise above opposition. He's graced you to, to pick your head up, to look forward. No, not to back down, not to give up, not to throw in the towel. And hear me tonight, God's grace is not licensed for you to, to live a sloppy life. No, God's grace is licensed for you to live strong and secure, knowing that God has graced you, that God has saved you, that He has called you, knowing that every time you get knocked down in life because of Jesus, because of what he's gone through, you can get back up again. I wonder tonight whether you know this grace. I wonder tonight whether you're walking in this grace. Do you know that his grace is on your life? Do you know that there's nothing you can do to earn it? Do you know that his grace doesn't keep record of wrong? His grace doesn't hang your past over your head. No, his grace doesn't keep you on the sidelines of life. Until you've made up for every mistake that you have made. No, when it is guilt versus grace, grace wins. When it is shame versus grace, grace wins. When it is sin versus grace, grace wins. Hands down. Hands down, grace wins. God has graced you to break through whatever it is that tries to break you in life. Look at Romans chapter 5. All that passing laws against sin did was produce more lawbreakers, but sin didn't and doesn't have a chance 
in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. When it's sin versus grace, grace wins, hands down. All sin can do is threaten us with death, and that's the end of the grace, because God is putting everything together again through the Messiah, invites us into life, a life that goes on and on and on, world without end. Come on, anyone thankful for the grace of God tonight? His grace which sustains you, which empowers you, He's graced you. He's graced you to endure whatever life throws your way. He's graced you for that matter. He's graced you for that business. His grace is on your life. And I wonder whether you know His grace tonight. If you would, would you close your eyes just for a moment? I just want to pray for a group of people in here. I want to ask you the question whether you're walking in His grace. Because let me tell you, Jesus, He is grace personified. And every single one of us in here, we were created by God to be in relationship with God. But the Bible says that we've all sinned, we've, we've fallen short. And the wages of sin is that that's what we deserve. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus came and he died and he rose again. So that you and I can be forgiven for everything we've ever done wrong. So that we can be set free in a moment like this. With a secure hope for the future. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that God has placed eternity in our hearts. There is this longing on the inside of all of us. That this sense of lostness, this sense of, of emptiness, that we're created for something more. And until we realize that God placed that void there and only He can fill it, we do our best. We, we try our hardest to just fill that void with all the things our top culture tells us is going to satisfy, like success money and image and relationships and, and reputation and the next high and the next hit, the next thing, the next endeavor, but it, it all falls short. It always leaves you longing for something more. I want to tell you tonight that that more is Jesus. I want to tell you tonight that He loves you, that, that He sees you, not just the face of the crowd, He knows you by name, has an incredible plan and purpose for your life. And it all begins with you opening up your heart to God. It all begins with saying yes, not to religion, but to a relationship with Jesus. And I'm going to count to three. And if there is anyone tonight, anyone under the sound of my voice, and you recognize that you need to make this decision tonight, you need to open up your life to God's grace. You need to open up your heart to Him. You need to accept the price that Jesus paid for you and I. But when I get to three, with no one looking around, no hesitation, I'd love for you just to be bold enough, brave enough. No one looking around, just to raise your hand. It's high enough, long enough for me to see it. I'll include you in this prayer. Hands already going up all over this place. God sees you. God loves you. One, God loves you. Jesus died and rose again so you could have life. Two, the Bible says that, that right now is your moment. Right now is the time of salvation. Don't wait. Don't delay. Don't, this, don't put this up another week. Three, if that's true, would you raise your hand? Would you join these hands up? It's amazing. People all over this place, right up the very top, God sees you. The past is the past. This is a brand new start, a brand new chapter for you. It's amazing. Maybe at one point you, you made a decision like this. Maybe you, you've raised your hand before, but you just feel so distant on the inside, feel so disconnected. God's purpose, from God's plan, so disconnected from His grace. And today you're saying, you know, I need to come back. I need to recommit my life to Jesus. I need a fresh start. If that's you, would you join all these hands? Allow me the privilege of including you in this prayer. It's awesome. It's awesome. He sees you. Glad I waited. God's hand is on your life. He's graced you to get through whatever it is that you're going through. It's amazing when you put your hands down. Church, can we stand to our feet? And as we do, come on, can we put our hands together? Can we thank God for people making the greatest decision that you will ever make?
no longer you trying to figure this out on your own. No, no, you're walking with God. He's with you. He's for you. He's graced you to do what he's called you to do. And you'll never be the same again. We're going to pray this prayer. And as soon as we get done praying, our, our team's going to lead us. We've got a few moments left to worship. You know, this is what I want to say. If you're in a season of life right now, and then you're facing challenge, you're, you're facing opposition, maybe you're walking into a really difficult week, I want you to remind yourself, you know, I'm, I'm graced for this. I'm graced for this week. I'm graced for that interview. I'm, I'm graced for that conversation. I'm graced to endure. I'm graced to move forward. I'm, I'm, I'm graced for this. And the world would love to, to throw a whole bunch at you. People would love to tell you who you're not and what you can't do. But if you can remind yourself, you know, I'm, I'm graced for this. I'm going to be all right. I really believe we're going to become all that God's called us to become and do all that God has called us to do. So when we worship in a moment, if you're in that season, I want you just to pray. And I want you to kind of have it out with God, maybe. Maybe let God know, God, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. God, I'm going through it. God, I need to be reminded of your grace tonight. And He will. He's good. He's faithful. So let's pray this prayer. Let's, let's worship. Let's see what God does. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I know he died and rose again for me. Right now, I turn from my own way. And I turn to you. Thank you that you love me. That you forgive me. By your grace, I'm saved. By your power, set free. Today's a 
regret it. And we pray this is not just a church, it's family. That you get involved, that you get connected. There's a welcome lounge in the back where you can meet some people and jump in a connect group or maybe join the growth track next Sunday at 345. But people that didn't make that decision kind of took a bold step of faith. Can we just encourage them and clap and celebrate them one more time that they made the right choice tonight? They made the right choice. We're excited. Listen, next weekend, Color Conference, it's happening. It's going down. Maybe you're attending. Maybe you're sponsoring people. Maybe you're praying for it. But it's going to be a spectacular week, and we're really excited about it. And next Sunday, we've got a bunch of our global team here and different people speaking. Nathan Finocchio is going to be in the house. He's going to be preaching and teaching a little bit. And we're just pumped for it. So, listen, church, why don't you write a name on that little card? You can drop it on the way out. But we love you. Have a great week. We'll see you at color.